On February 19th of this year, Barron's dropped an article declaring Oracle a cloud giant. And the article explained why the stock was a buy. Investors took notice and the stock ran up 18% over the next nine trading days. And it peaked on March 9th, the day before Oracle announced its latest earnings. The company beat consensus earnings on both top line and EPS last quarter, but investors, they did not like Oracle's tepid guidance and the stock pulled back. But it's still, as you can see, well above its pre barons article price. What does all this mean? Is Oracle a cloud giant? What are its growth prospects? Now, many parts of Oracle's business are growing, including Fusion ERP, Fusion HCM, NetSuite. We're talking deep into the double digits, you know, 20 plus percent growth. Its on-prem legacy license business, however, continues to decline. That moderates the overall company growth because that on-prem business is so large. So the overall, Oracle's growing in the low single digits. Now, what stands out about Oracle is its recurring revenue model. That figure, the company says, now represents 73% of its revenue. And that's going to continue to grow. Now, two other things stood out on the earnings call to us. First, Oracle's pl Oracle plans on increasing its CapEx by 50% in the coming quarter. That's a lot. Now, it's still far less than AWS, Google, or Microsoft spend on capital, but it's a meaningful data point. Second, Oracle's consumption revenue for autonomous database and cloud uh, uh, infrastructure, OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, grew at 64% and 139% respectively. And these two factors combined with the CapEx spend suggest that the company has real momentum. I mean, look, it's possible that the CapEx <laughs> announcement is maybe just optics and they're front loading some spend to show the street that it has a, you know, it's a, a player in cloud, but I, I don't think so. Oracle, Safra Cats, usually pretty disciplined when it comes to its spending. Now today on March 17th, Oracle announced updates to its autonomous data warehouse. And with me is David Floyer, who has extensively researched Oracle over the years. And today we're going to unpack the Oracle autonomous data warehouse ADW announcement, what it means to customers. But we also want to dig into Oracle's strategy. We want to compare it to some other prominent database vendors, specifically AWS and Snowflake. David Floyer, welcome. Back to theCUBE, thanks for making some time for me. Thank you, great, great pleasure to be here. All right, I want to get into the news, but I want to start with this idea of the autonomous database, which Oracle's announcement today is building on. Oracle uses the analogy of a self-driving car. It's obviously a powerful metaphor. It's a, uh, they call it the self-driving database. And my takeaway is that this means that the, the system automatically provisions, it upgrades, it does all the patching for you, it tunes itself. Oracle claims that all reduces labor costs or admin costs by 90%. So I ask you, is this the right interpretation of what Oracle means by autonomous database? And is, is, is it real? Is it the right interpretation? Um, I would, I, it's a nice analogy. It's a Tesla analogy, isn't it? Um, uh, I would put it as the first stage of the autonomous data, data warehouse was to do the things that you talked about, which was uh, the tuning, uh, the provisioning, all of that sort of thing. The second stage is actually, I think, more interesting in that what they're focusing on is making it easy to use for the end user, eliminating the requirement for IT staff to be there uh, to help in the actual using of it. And that is a very big, a very big step for them, but an absolutely vital step because all of the competition are focusing on ease of use, ease of use, ease of use, and, and cheapness of being able to, to manage and, and deploy. Uh, but so I think that is the, the really important area that Oracle has focused on, and it seemed to have done so very well. So in your view, is this, I mean, you don't really hear a lot of other companies talking about this, this analogy of the self-driving database. Um, is this unique? Is it, is, it a, is it differentiable for Oracle? If so, why? Or maybe you could help us understand that a little bit better. Well, the whole strategy uh, is, is unique in its breadth. Um, it, it is really uh, brought together a whole number of things together and made it, uh, the, of its type, the best. Uh, so it has a single, uh, a whole number of data sources and data base, data, database types. 
So it's got a very broad range of different ways that you can look at the data. And the, the second thing that is uh, also excellent is it's a platform. Um, it has, um, it, 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 uh, it, it is fully self-provisioned um, and uh, it, it, its functionality is, is very, very broad indeed. Uh, the quality of the original uh, SQL and the and the query languages, etc., is is very very good indeed, and its ability to do joins, for example, is excellent. So all of the building blocks are there, and together with its uh, sharing of the same data with OLTP and inference and in-memory data bases as well. The, together, the breadth of what they have is unique okay. uh, and very, very powerful. I, I want to come back to this, but let's get into the news uh, a little bit and the announcement. I mean, it seems like what's new in the autonomous data warehouse piece for, for Oracle is new tooling around four areas that I, I so Andy Mendelson, the, 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 the head mm. of this group, um, and sort of the guy who really is his baby, uh, he talked about four things. F my takeaway, faster, simpler loads, simplified transforms, um, autonomous machine learning models, which are, are facilitating what he called citizen data science, and then, and then faster time to insights. So tooling to make those four things happen. Um, what's your take and takeaways on, on the news? I, I think those are all cor correct. Uh, I would add the um, uh, ease of use um, in terms of uh, being able to drop, drag and drop. Uh, the user interface has been dramatically improved. Again, I think those strategically are actually more important that the others are all useful and, and good components of it. But strategically, uh, I think it's more important this ease of use, the use of Apex, for example, uh, are, are more important. And- um, why? Uh, why, why, why are they more important strategically? because they focus on the end user's capability. For example, one of the things uh, that they've started to introduce is Python together with uh, the spatial databases, for example. That is really important that you reach out to the developer as they are um, and what tools they want to, to use. So those type of ease of use things, those types of things of respecting what the end users use. For example, they haven't come out with um, anything like uh, Click or Tableau. They've left that there for that marketplace for the end user to use what they like best. You mean you're not, they're, they're, not, they're not trying to compete with those two tools. They, they had a laundry list of stuff uh, that yeah. they supported, or uh, you know, Talon, Tableau, Looker, Click, Informatica, IBM. I had IBM there, uh, so <laughs> their, their claim was, "Hey, we're open." But so, but but the, so that's that's smart. That's just hey, they realize that the people use these don't, tools. Don't try and exclude other people. Yeah. And be a platform and be an ecosystem uh, for the end users. Okay, so Mendelssohn, who made the announcement, said that Oracle's the smartphone of databases, and, and I think. I actually think Ellison kind of used that, or may, maybe that was us applying it to him. I thought he did, like the iPhone of when he announced Exadata way back when, the integrated hardware and software. But is that how you see it? Is this is Oracle the smartphone of, of databases? Uh, it is. I mean, they are trying to own the complete stack, the hardware with uh, with Exadata, all the way up to um, the, uh, the the databases, or the data warehouses, and the OLTP databases, the inference databases. Um, they're trying to own the complete stack uh, from top to bottom. And that's what makes autonomy uh, possible. Uh, you can make it autonomous when you control all of that, take away all of the requirements for IT uh, in the business itself. So it's democratizing uh, the use of data warehouses, it is pushing it out to the lines of business and it's simplifying it and uh, making it possible to push out so that they can own their own data, they can manage their own data and they do not need an IT person from headquarters to help them. 
Let's stay on this a little bit more, and then I want to go into some of the comp competitive stuff because Mendelssohn mentioned AWS several times. Um, one of the things that struck me, he said, hey, we got, we're basically one API because we're doing analytics in the cloud, we're doing data in the cloud, we're doing integration in the cloud, and, and that's sort of a big part of the value proposition. He made some comparisons to Redshift. Uh, of course, I would say, if you can't find a workload where you beat your big competitor, then you shouldn't be in this business. So I, I take those things with a grain of salt. But one of the other things that caught me is that migrating from on-prem to Oracle in Oracle Cloud was, was very simple. And I think he might've made some comparisons to, to other platforms. And this to me is important because he also brought in that Gartner uh, data. We, we looked at that Gartner data when they came out with it. In the operational database class, Oracle smoked everybody. They were like way ahead. And the reason why I think that's important is because Let's face it, the mission critical workloads, when you look at what's moving into AWS, the mission critical workloads, the high performance, high criticality OLTP stuff, that's not moving in droves. Uh, and, and you've made the point often that companies with their own cloud, particularly Oracle, you've mentioned this about IBM for certain, you know, DB2 for instance, customers are going to, there's going to be a lower risk environment moving from on-prem to, to their cloud because you could do, you know, I don't think you can get Oracle Rack on AWS, uh, for example. I don't think Exadata is running in, in, in AWS data centers. And so that like-like component is going to facilitate migration. You know, what's your take on all that spiel? I, I think that's absolutely right. Um, your crown jewels, the most, uh, the most expensive and the most valuable applications are the mission critical applications, the ones that uh, have got to take a beating, keep on uh, ticking. So those types of applications are where Oracle really shines. Uh, they own a very large high percentage of those mission critical workloads. And the, you have the choice if you're going to uh, AWS, for example, of either migrating to Oracle on AWS um, and that is frankly uh, not a good fit at all. Um, the, the a lot of uh, constraints to uh, running uh, large systems on AWS, uh, large mission critical systems. Um, so that's not an option. And then the, the option, of course, that AWS will push is. Uh, move to Aurora, change your way of uh, writing applications, make them tiny little pieces and, and stitch them all together with microservices. And um, that, that's okay if you're a small organization, but that has got a lot of problems in its own right, because then you, the user, have to stitch all those pieces together and you're responsible for testing it and you're responsible for looking after it. And that, as you grow becomes a bigger and bigger overhead. So uh, our, uh, AWS, in my opinion, needs to have a, a move towards a tier one database of its own. And it is not in that position at the moment. Interesting, so you don't, okay, well, let's talk about the competitive landscape uh, and the choices that customers have. As I said, Mendelssohn men mentioned AWS many times. Larry on, on the calls often, you know, takes shy. It's a, it's a compliment to me. When, when Larry Ellison calls you out, that means you've made it. You know, you're, 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 <laughs> you're doing well. We've seen it over the years, whether it's IBM or Workday or Salesforce, even though Salesforce, big Oracle customer, of course, AWS, we, as we know, Oracle customer as well. Um, even though AWS tells us they're off Oracle, that when you peel the it's onion, they're, they're, they're five not, years to migrate some yeah. of the work. Well, this, I, I, this, I believe they're still using Oracle in certain workloads. Yeah. But anyway, we digress. So AWS, though, they take a different approach, and I want to push on this a little bit with database. It's got it's got more than a dozen, I think, purpose-built databases. They take this kind of right tool for the right job approach, whereas Oracle they're converging all this function into a single database. SQL, JSON, graph databases, machine learning, blockchain. I'd love to talk about more about blockchain if we have time, but it seems to me that the right tool for the right job, purpose built, uh, very granular down to the primitives and APIs. That seems to me to be a pretty viable approach versus kind of a Swiss army approach. H how do you compare the two? Yes, and, and it is uh, to many, Initial programmers who are very interested, for example, in graph databases or in uh, uh, um, time series databases, they are looking for a, a, a cheap uh, 
app database that will do the job for a particular project. And that makes for that for the programmer or for the that individual uh, piece of work is makes it a very sensible way of doing it. Uh, and they pay for it, and it's you know it's uh, it's 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 clear um, uh, cloud dynamics. The challenge as you have more and more data, and as you are building up your data data warehouse and your data lakes, is that you do not want to have to move data from one place to another place. So, for example, if you've got Aurora, you have to move the database. And it's a pretty complicated thing to do it, to move it to Redshift. It's uh, five or six steps to do that. And each of those costs money, and each of those take time. More importantly, they take time. The Oracle approach is a single database and in terms of all the all the pieces there, obviously you have multiple databases. You have different OLTB databases to uh, data warehouse databases, but uh, it's a single architecture and a single design, which means that all of the work in terms of moving stuff from one place to another place is within Oracle itself. It, Oracle is doing that work for you, and that is a. Uh, as you grow, that becomes a very, very important, to me, very, very important cost saving. Uh, you, you, the, the overhead of, of all those different ones. And the databases themselves originated all as open source and, and they've done very well with it. And then, and there's a, a large revenue stream behind those. AWS, you mean? Yeah, AWS, yeah. Yeah. yes. Uh, the, the original databases in AWS, and, the, and they've done a lot of work in terms of making it fit with the PaaS, et cetera. But uh, in, if for larger organizations, uh, especially very large ones, and certainly if they want to combine, for example, data warehouse with the OLTP and the inference, which is, in, in my opinion, a, a, a very good thing that they should be trying to do, that that is incredibly difficult to do with AWS. And in my opinion, AWS has to invest uh, enormously in to make the whole ecosystem much more, uh, much, oh, fit, much better. Okay, so innovation required there, maybe it's part of the TAM expansion strategy, but just to sort of digress for a second. So, so it seems, and by the way, there are others that are doing the, taking this converged approach. It seems like that is a, is a trend. I mean, you certainly seen it with single store. I mean, the name sort of implies that formerly in MSQL. Yeah. Um, right. I, I think Monty's Weeben's you know, splice machine is probably headed in a similar direction with yes. you know, embedding AI in. Microsoft's kind of interesting. It seems like Microsoft is willing to build this abstraction layer um, that, that hides that complexity of the, the different you know, tooling. AWS thus far has not taken that approach. And then I'm you know, sort of looking at Snowflake. Snowflake's got a completely different, I think Snowflake's trying to do something completely different. I don't, I don't think they're necessarily trying to take Oracle head on. I mean, they're certainly trying to, to I, I guess, I guess let's, let's talk about this. Snowflake simplifying EDW, that's clear. Yeah. You know, zero to Snowflake yeah. in 90 minutes. Uh, it's got yeah. this data cloud vision. So you sign on to this, you know, Snowflake, Speaking of uh, layers, they're abstracting a co the complexity of the underlying cloud. That's what the data cloud vision is all about. They they talk about this global mesh, but they've not done a good job of explaining what the heck it is. You know, we've been pushing them on that, but uh, we got As aspirational at the moment. Well, I guess. I mean, I, I, yeah, it seems that way. And so, uh, but conceptually, it's I think very powerful. But but this it, as and in, in, in reality, what what Snowflake's doing with data sharing, a lot of reading. It's probably mostly read only. Uh, and I say mostly read only. No, there you go, Yogi Berra. <laughs> um, but it's mostly read, uh, and 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 so you're able to share the data. It's governed. I mean, it's it's actually you know quite genius how they've implemented this with its simplicity. Simplicity. It is a caching architecture. We've talked about that. We can geek out about that. There's good. There's bad. There's ugly. But generally speaking, I guess my premise here, I would love your thoughts, is that Snowflake's trying to do something different. It's trying to be not just yeah. another data warehouse. It's not just trying to compete with data lakes. It's trying to create this data cloud to facilitate data sharing, put data in the hands of business owners in, in terms of uh, product build, data product builders. That's a different vision uh, than anything I've seen uh, thus far. Your thoughts? 
I, I agree. Uh, and even more going further, uh, being a place where people can sell data, put it up and make it available to uh, whoever whoever needs it. So, and making it so simple that it can be shared uh, across, across the country, across the world. I think it's a very powerful, um, uh, a, a very powerful vision indeed. The challenge they have is that the pieces at the moment are very, very easy to use, but the quality in terms of uh, the, for example, joins, we, we, I mentioned that joins were very powerful in Oracle. They don't try and do joins. Um, they, they say- They no, being Snowflake. Use. Snowflake, does, yeah, they don't they even, be, right. They, they, yeah, they, they yeah. would say use another Postgres yeah, database yes. to do that. Uh, so, so they they have a long way to go. Complex to, joins, anyway. Maybe simple joins, is, yeah. Right. Complex joins. So there's a they have a long way to go in terms of the functionality of their of their product, and also, in my opinion, they should be going to have more types of databases inside it, including OLTP. And they can do that. They have obviously got a great market cap and they can do that by acquisition as, as well as they can. They've started, them. they've started. I think I think yeah. they support JSON, right? Uh, they support JSON, definitely. And, and yeah. Graph, I think there's a Graph database that's either coming yeah. or is there, I don't know, I, I keep all this <laughs> stuff in my head, but there's no reason they can't go in that direction. I mean, in speaking to the founders in Snowflake, they were like, look, you know, we're, we're kind of new, we were focused on simple. We, they came, a lot of them came from Oracle, so they know database and they know how hard it is to do things like facilitate complex joins and do complex workload management. And so they, they said, let's just simplify, we'll put it in the cloud and we'll, we'll spin up a separate data warehouse. You know, it's a virtual data warehouse every time you want one. So that's how they handle those things. Um, so different philosophy, uh, but, but again, again, coming back to some of the mission critical work uh, and, and, and some of the larger Oracle customers, they said they have a thousand autonomous database customers. They, I, th I think it was autonomous database, not ADW, but at any rate, they, a few stood out, Aon, Lyft, uh, I think Deloitte stood out, and there's you know, obviously hundreds more. Um, so you know, people misunderstand Oracle, I think. They got a big install base. They invest in R&D, and you know, they talk about lock-in, sure, but you know, the CIOs that, that I talk to and you talk to, David, they, they're looking for business value. They'll, the, I would say that 75 to 80% of them will gravitate toward business value over the fear of lock-in. Uh, and, and I think at the end of the day, they feel like, you know what? If our business is performing, it's a better business decision. It's a better business case. I, I uh, fully agree. They've been very difficult to do business with. Uh, in the past, um, you know, everybody's in dread of the uh, the audit, <laughs> the knock on the door from the audit. <laughs> right. um, and so, and 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 that is that from a uh, purchasing point of view has been really bad uh, experience for for many many customers. The users of the data of the database itself are very happy indeed. I mean, you talk to them and they they understand why, what they're paying for, they understand the value. And in terms of availability and, and all of the tools to, for, for uh, complex, uh, um, multi-dimensional types of applications, it's the only, pretty well the only game in town. There's only DB2 and SQL that have any hope of doing that. You mean Microsoft, so, Microsoft SQL, right? Oh, yeah. SQL Server, Which yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely competitive for sure. DB2, you know, IBM, look, yeah. IBM lost its its dominant position in database. They kind of seeded yeah, that. Or, Oracle had to fight hard to win it. Um, yes. It wasn't obvious in the 80s who was going to be the database king. And Oracle yeah. had to fight. And to me, I, I always tell people, the difference is that <laughs> the chairman of Oracle is also the CTO. They spend yeah. money on R&D and they throw off a ton of cash. Uh, I want to say and, something yeah. about... Uh, I was just going to make one extra point. The simplicity of and, and the capability of their cloud versions of all of this is incredibly good. Uh, they are better in terms of 
spending what you uh, need, what you use, much better than AWS, for example, or anybody else. So they have really come full circle in terms of uh, attractiveness in a cloud environment. You mean so, you mean you mean uh, charging you for what you consume? Uh, he was, Mendelssohn right. talked about that. He made made a big point about the granularity. You pay for only what you need. If you need if you need if you need 33 CPUs, you know, the other databases you got to shape. Yeah. You got to if you need 33, yeah. you got to go to 64. I, I don't know if that's true for everyone. I'm not sure, sure that's true for Snowflake. It, it may be. I, I got to dig into that a little bit. But but I mean, well, Snow, Snowflake, yes, yeah, Snowflake can has got a front end to, to right. hide it. Behind. Right, right, right. But 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 yeah. but but, 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 I, but I, I want to push it that a little bit because. I want to go look at their pricing strategies because I, I still think they make you buy. It may, I may be wrong. I thought they make you still do a one year, two year, or three year term. Um, I don't know if you can just turn it off at any time. They might, they might allow you. I, I should hold off. I'll do some more research on that. But I wanted to make a point about the, the audits. You mentioned audits before. A big mistake that a lot of Oracle customers have made many times, and we've written about this in negotiating with Oracle. You got to bring your best and your brightest when you negotiate with Oracle. Some of the things that people, you know, didn't pay attention to, and I think they, they've sort of caught on to this, is that Oracle's SOWs adjudicate over the MSA. A lot of legal departments and procurement departments, oh, do we have an MSA with Oracle? Yes, you do. Okay, great. And because they, they think the MSA, they, then they can, if they have an MSA, they can they can rubber stamp it. But the 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 SOW really dictates, and and Oracle's, you know, got you there, and and they're they're really smart about that. So you got to bring your best and the brightest. Um, and you got to really negotiate hard with Oracle. You get you get in trouble. So sure. uh, yeah. it is what it is. But coming back to Oracle, let's let's sort of wrap on this dominant position in mission critical. We saw that from the Gartner uh, uh, research, yeah. for, especially for operational, giant customer base. This cloud first notion. This investing in R and D, open. We'll put a question mark around that. But hey, they're doing some cool yeah. stuff with Microsoft it's ecosystem. I put an ecosystem rather than open. They are. Uh, they are promoting their ecosystem. Yeah, and and look, I mean, for a lot of their customers, and we've talked to many, they say, look, they, actually, at the end of the day, we this saves us money, and we don't have to yeah. migrate. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. so uh, interesting. And so, you're, I'll give you the last word. Uh, with, we started sort of focused on the announcement. So, what's what's your uh, what's your what's your, what do you want to leave us? My with? last word is that you, there are platforms for certain key applications or, or key parts of the infrastructure, which I think uh, can differentiate themselves from uh, the uh, from the Azure's or for the AWS. And Oracle owns one of those, SAP might be another one, but there are certain platforms which are big enough and important enough that they will, in my opinion, will succeed in uh, uh, in their cloud strategy for this. Great, David, thanks so much. Appreciate your insights. Good to be here. All thank right, you. thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. We'll see you next time.